Greetings, my name is Ryan Nix. I am a Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. I'd like to take a moment and talk to you about IBM's Cloud Pack for Business Automation on ROSA, Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS, which is essentially a managed OpenShift, and utilizing IBM's Storage Fusion, formerly Red Hat's OpenShift Data Foundation. So, how do we bring these three things together and what are some of the considerations around them when you're moving a uh, business for automation or a file net investment? First things first, what is IBM's Cloud Pack for Business Automation or uh, what was the older file net standalone solution? It, essentially, it is a content management platform with workflows. And when customers are migrating to the latest version of this IBM software, it ends up being a collection of IBM products bundled into a container offering running on top of Red Hat's OpenShift on AWS. And I think that's a fair place to start. So when we look at Cloud Pack for Business Automation on AWS, we are going to see that deployed into a single AWS region inside a VPC, and we're going to see open shift in the AWS account. Now, in this particular uh, discussion, I'm not just using any old open shift, I'm focusing on the Red Hat open shift service for AWS. This is a managed offering of open shift, which means the customer or whoever the downline consumer of this product is, they don't need to add in operational capacities to manage OpenShift. It is done for them by Red Hat SRE teams. So scaling, replacements, health, monitoring, all of those things are taken care of on behalf of the customer. It's, it's managed for you. When we deploy Cloud Pack solutions, now Cloud Packs are a construct that IBM use for their software where they take multiple IBM products that complement each other and they bundle them together into a single product offering that can be purchased and then deployed. So instead of deploying all of these components individually, you have a deployment mechanism for the Cloud Pack and it installs all of those components as containerized workloads on top of OpenShift. So in this case, what Cloud Pack for Business Automation essentially is, it is all of the components that we needed for a comprehensive file management system. So there is a file management component or a content management component provided by FileNet. You can see it over here. And, and FileNet, what it does is it allows customers to take documents, scan those documents, upload them into a file repository, store the related metadata, that for any sort of contractual information that you see in a financial institution, for example. Uh, related to that, uh, IBM Content Services is under the hood as well. So we've got uh, a collection of components that uh, manage that content, manage the metadata for it, deal with RBAC controls around it, deal with abstracting the data if you want to share this to different stakeholders. There's business process mining. So if you have a look at building business processes uh, around how information flows through your content management system. Likewise, there is an automated workflow component. So if you're doing approval processes, or if you are, in this case, with a financial institution, uh, somebody's going to send somebody a contract, the person's going to sign that contract, the second signee needs to sign that contract as well, then it needs to go through approval and review before it's finally approved. That workflow element and the business process mining interact with each other. Uh, automated decision-making process and AI-driven detection mechanisms. So if I see this kind of behavior, should it flag a fraud investigation or does this move to a diff different business unit? So those sort of automated insights, all of these IBM products being brought in under the hood to form the core of what is IBM's Cloud Pack for Business Automation. It, it's not just a content management system. It's not just FileNet. It's uh, several components fitting together to complement each other, running as containerized workloads on top of OpenShift, on top of AWS. Now, when we dive a little bit deeper into this, we do need persistent storage 
for several of these components. Uh, what's also in the background is you might find some uh, NoSQL and relational databases that form part of the cloud pack. So you could, for example, see things like a, a containerized MongoDB running inside the platform. The relational database that stores the metadata for FileNet does give customers options. It could be a containerized version of IBM's DB2 running inside OpenShift, and then it would need storage. Alternatively, it could be something else, and we'll, we'll come back to this in a moment. We will have a look at uh, potentially using uh, AWS's relational database service, RDS. But for those components that need to store uh, persistent volume information, one of the options that we could use is Red Hat's OpenShift Data Foundation, which is a Ceph-based implementation of storage, and that storage layer runs as a component on top of OpenShift, it adds another layer of OpenShift. But in this case, because we're using Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS, the managed version of OpenShift, our storage layer has to be supported by ROSA. So in this case, we can't just take the historic ODF we do need a managed version of ODF. And, and I'm using the older term now. What is happening is that product has been brought in under IBM storage and it is going through a rebranding exercise. So from here on in, we'll refer to it as IBM's managed version of storage fusion, IBM storage fusion. Essentially, it's uh, very much the same product under the hood, uh, just going through an IBM rebranding space. But you'll see something very interesting over here. You'll see a OpenShift cluster over here. And this is a ROSA cluster running inside the customer's account that is running my cloud pack for business automation. Think of it as a, as a consuming workload cluster. Then I have a completely separate OpenShift cluster over here, also running in the customer's account, but this is my IBM Fusion storage product. It's running on a separate OpenShift cluster and this presents storage to my application cluster. And this storage layer could service multiple clusters. So if I had uh, several different containerized platforms supporting workloads, uh, I could have three or five or six of them uh, consuming off of that same storage layer. So I don't have to deploy a, a storage infrastructure for each of these. I could have one and then have it servicing multiple application workloads. It's not uncommon for my customers to have multiples of these. I could, for example, have uh, this architecture duplicated into a non-production and in production as well. Let's quickly zoom in over here. So bear in mind, this is uh, AWS storage provided by EBS. It's gonna be multi-AZ. It is going to be presented as workloads into my OpenShift environment. It's gonna provide persistent volume claims to those application workloads. What we also have in the background is a collection of AWS S3 buckets, and there's a few of them at play here. Some of them are there for object storage. So you'll see over here, I have my FileNet solution, and my FileNet solution is going to store some of its information inside S3. So any of those scanned documents, those archived pieces of information, we don't store them. Uh, inside uh, EBS or something like that. We, we push them to S3 uh, in the background. The other buckets that exist, I'm gonna come back to and they relate to the backup and restore process that IBM's Cloud Pack for Business Automation takes advantage of uh, as a workload running on top of OpenShift. As I said, there is a relational database. In this case, we're not going to use something that is running inside OpenShift, but rather shift that storage externally. So we'll take advantage of AWS or Amazon's relational database service, RDS, and we're going to deploy a multi-AZ implementation of RDS. So if we have a failure, uh, we have the ability to fail over to a secondary database system in another availability zone, and, and we get business continuity from that. Also, a benefit of shifting the storage out means that I don't have to worry about persistent volume claims and persistent storage in my OpenShift environment for a relational database. 
My open shift environment, as well as much of my business empire, does require some sort of identity and access control. So uh, the, the concept of having a directory services implementation that is going to provide single sign-on for my workloads as well as open shift in itself. When you bring those investments to AWS, you can't leave that behind. So if my customer is using something like Active Directory on-premises, uh, what is a very good idea here is to actually go create a shared services VPC and then take AWS's directory service, deploy that there, and, and we can create a trust relationship or a duplication of the on-premises directory services on the cloud. What this does is it means any sort of directory services interaction is catered for. So I've got authentication, I've got um, uh, the RBAC mechanisms, I've got single sign-on, but I'm not dependent on a connection back to on-premises. If, if connectivity to on-premises fails for whatever reason, I've got localized directory services. Uh, yes, if we re-establish connectivity, we can have replication kick in and uh, replicate any changes to the environment. Stitching all of these together, you will notice that we have a VPC for my ROSA implementations. I've got a separate VPC for my database implementations and a shared services VPC for my Active Directory. Linking these different networks together inside AWS, what we're going to do is we're going to have connections from these different VPCs to a... AWS Transit Gateway, and think of this as a very cool router infrastructure. What this does is it greatly simplifies the networking between environments in AWS. So just to re back to the disaster recovery side of things, we do have all of these containerized workloads interacting with persistent volume claims. So we've got persistent volume and persistent volume claims interacting with my storage layer over there. Uh, from a backup and recovery perspective, RDS we would backup and restore using uh, the uh, snapshots that are available in RDS. Active directly we would typically recover through a replication process. Uh, so there's going to be replication to an, a secondary domain controller or back to on-premises. The Content in S3 can literally be copied out and copied back in, and potentially you could use something like AWS Backup to facilitate that. From a OpenShift container workloads perspective, what we have the ability to do is back up the storage provided by IBM Storage Fusion and literally have those backups stored inside a persistent volume backup. That could be something like Valero, for example, running on top of OpenShift and backing that information up. And then, of course, we've got additional uh, buckets over here. All in all, the three major building blocks that are facilitating IBM Cloud Pack for business automation on top of managed OpenShift using a managed version of IBM Storage Fusion. And that is the ROSA cluster for IBM Storage Fusion in itself. That is the ROSA cluster for the Cloud Pack in itself, relational database, S3, and then the common building blocks that we see with most enterprise customers is a transit gateway to link all of that together and a shared services infrastructure. And that essentially is what is under the hood of IBM Cloud Pack uh, for business automation on top of managed OpenShift using IBM Storage Fusion on AWS. Thank you. I hope this was uh, insightful and thought-provoking.